Oh, sorry, I didn't see y'all broke asses come in. Welcome to Springs Notes. It's your boy, M.C. Laughlin, coming at you with another book. George Orwell's 1984. This story pops out of a whack-ass streets of Airstrip 1, where our boy Winston out here flexing on the daily, making that grain in the Ministry of Truth. Winston is a lower member of a big organization called the Party, which controls society and is headed by a man's named Big Brother. Winston gets tired of Big Brother's crap and starts going full incognito mode on him, dropping fat bars dissing on Big Brother. If caught lacking, this act of defiance could end up putting him in a slammer, which gets him stressing about some other thotty named Julia, who he thinks is part of the Thought Patrol. Not only is he worried about her throwing him under the bus, but he's mad thirsty for this fox. One day on the grind, Julia came up to our boy and hit him with an I.L.Y. Passing him a note that says I love you. Oof. Winston ain't passing up on no chances with a honey like this and dives straight into clapping them cheeks in the forest. Oof. These lovers finally find a room in a penthouse suite of some hood rat's antique shop and decide to meet there from future hookups. On another day at his 9 to 5, a level 35 boss named O'Brien pulls up on Winston, copping the same anti-totalitarian vibes. Winston brings his main chick over to O'Brien's crib, but we find out that O'Brien is actually a brother, and I ain't talking about being black. Our dog is part of a gang called the Brotherhood, whose main goal is to blow up Big Brother and act like they don't know nobody. O'Brien initiates him into the gang and sends him home with a book written by their boss. While hitting up them verses back at the penthouse, the Thaw Patrol busts in and bags our boy and his honey, landing them both in the slammer. Turns out O'Brien's a snake and led the Thaw Patrol to them. This time, O'Brien goes sicko mode and tortures our mans into confessing some dirty deeds he ain't even done. He whips out boy in shape and fills him with brotherly love, but he ain't done until he whips out his main strap, the rat cage. Winston takes that fat L and confesses that he wants him to hit Julia instead of him. This is a final straw breaking Winston to big brother. Now this book ain't just some whack ass fairy tale about some homeboy and his girl trying to defy the government. Orwell writes this book to warn the West of the practices of totalitarianism. He has seen firsthand the cruel methods used by the communist governments and needed to tell the rest of the world that they ain't playing around. All this totalitarianism biz came down to one thing, control. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. As Orwell laid it down, Big Brother had a whole fourth of his government focused on changing past records to reflect the way he was feeling. Now well, this sounds whack to us, but these homies accepted this crap by using a method called doublethink. Using doublethink, these hood rats could be believing some fake ass crap that they know was lies, but also knew that it was never lies in the first place. Hence the name Double Thing. This let Big Brother control the minds of all the gangsters without ever being questioned, which he monitored with telescreens and mics in every crib and on every street of the whole damn hood. This was all part of Orwell's message to us saying that if we let this perfect example of a totalitarianism government go down, all our self expression and freedoms were gonna go down too. Thanks guys for tuning in for Springs Notes. I'm your host, MC Laughlin. We'll catch you next time. Please like, comment, subscribe, whatever. I don't know how much you need.